Previously on the bill. Right, go, go, go. Get out! There's evidence to suggest you were raped, but if I can't remember, maybe I should just be grateful. Is it credible that she can't remember anything about the attack? I don't think she was making it up, Garb. We'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, but not a superintendent. Five. Yeah, we're chasing the suspect towards Hoxton Road. Stop it, mate. Five, five, five. How are you doing it, then? Zero Oscar from 315, chasing Mel U31 towards Hoxton Road. Blue jacket, black cap. Over You right? Yeah, I'll just turn me ankle. Well done. Charlie Heaton's arriving at 10. I've got Jim and Smithy giving him the guy who told me. It's a shame Junior's in court. Yeah, I know. I'm not long around myself. I've just come in to collect a few things from my old office. Then I'm off to lunch with a parliamentary select committee. Enjoys a being better commander. I'll let you know. So what do you reckon to Heaton? Well, this is his first posting as a superintendent. I would have thought Sun Hill could have done with a more experienced hand on the telegraph. Do you think we'll get on, me and him? Oh, yeah. You're a kind, loving, gentle soul. It's all end up punching each other's lights out. Oh, there's a leak. That's all I need. I think that's all you need. Is someone dealing with this? I'll catch you before you go. Beth Adamson? That's right. Hi. I'm DC Susie Sim. This is DC Kezia Walker. Yeah. I understand you've been attacked. No, I think it's a bit worse than that. This way, please. Something happened to me two nights ago. Then I saw one of your boards asking for information about rape after a night out in a club. Yeah, that happened just over a week ago. It, it's not the same club or anything. It just started me thinking whether I might have been raped. I, I know it sounds weird. It's just I'm not sure I thought you could help. We need to talk it through with you first. Are you all right to do that now? How are you feeling? I'm OK. Well, it can be quite distressing, so if you want to stop at any time, just let us know. How did your evening start, Beth? I was out clubbing at 365. Yeah, I know the place. Were you with anyone? Yes, yeah, some friends from work. I'm a junior doctor at St. Hughes. Did you stay with your friends all evening? Yes, but they left before I did. OK. I'd had a bit to drink, and I met this guy. I can't remember his name. It, um, G, it was Gary, maybe. And we spent most of the evening dancing. Then... Go on. Then I went to the toilets with him to do some drugs. I kept him in. If the hospital finds out, I could lose my job. There's no reason for them to know. What happened next? Um, <clears throat> well, me and this guy started kissing and, and then things moved on. He raped you? No, no, we just started to have sex. Did you give your consent? No, it wasn't like that. This wasn't the rape, this just happened. Anyway, we were caught pretty much kind of straight away by one of the bouncers and thrown out. And the rest is a bit hazy. We walked back to his flat, and I pretty much passed out. Can you remember the address? What time was this? Um, half two, maybe. The last, <clears throat> the last thing I remember is is looking up and and seeing this street light shine, shining down, and I was. I was squashed in this small space, and, and this man... <laughs> this man was on top of me, 
I, I, I heard his voice. It wasn't... It wasn't angry or... or aggressive. Or anything. It's just... I couldn't move. Do you think it could have been the guy you met at the club? I don't think so. But it might have been. Well, I couldn't see his face. But the thing is, I mean, if it is this guy from the club and we'd already started to have sex, then is it rape later? I just don't know. Well, it's rape whenever it takes place if you don't give your consent. Well, I don't think I ever gave my consent. What happened afterwards? I can't remember. Um, I woke up in my own bed at home. And that really freaks me out. I just don't know what happened. Did anyone see you come home? Neighbours, maybe? No. No, I've asked. Look, can we, can we stop? Please, um, I didn't realise I'd get upset. I just thought I'd come in and talk about it. I understand. You've done brilliantly, Beth. Hopefully you might remember more later. We'll see. What we need to do now, if it's all right with you, is to get someone to drive you to the women's refuge where we can take some samples. Are you okay to do that? We'll also need your clothes that you wore that night. I've washed them, everything. I'm sorry, it's stupid, I know. I just felt so dirty. It's all right, I understand. We may still be able to find something. You know, you could be in luck time. This new governor, I've heard he's dead keen on bringing younger officers in. Oh, yeah? How much bit of that brings me any luck? By early retirement. I think about it. Nice fat pension. You buy yourself a place in the sun, you don't need to work again. Apart from paying my dad's home care bills. Dumb one. Yeah, I forgot about that. Are you smelling what I'm smelling? It's all that running. No, spliff. Yeah, that's Tom Dwyer's granddad, isn't it? Right, I'm having him. Ah, Why don't you leave it to me? Just step up the car. Marcus! Tony! <laughs> How are you doing, my man? Not too good. Twisted the ankle, chasing the drug dealer. We're getting younger, you know. You need to get fit. <laughs> no, what I need is a big mug of tea. <laughs> Marcus, uh, do you mind putting that out until we've gone, if you, uh, know what I mean? Ah, uh, yeah, right. How's that grandson of yours? Tom, don't talk to me about that boy. Uh, I heard CID were looking for him. Something about a serious assault on another youth. Look, if I were you, you get the chance to have a word with him. Tell him to call a really good legal aid solicitor. Then get himself down to Sun Hill voluntarily. You know, it looks good, they like that sort of thing. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. But do you think Tom has got that much sense? No, I don't. But I know you do, Pops. Listen, ask him before things get worse. You take care, my friend. And you, Tony, you put your feet up, eh? Yeah, if only. Oh, yeah. That's my kind of music. Classic. You didn't nick him. It's called discretion, eh? It's for the greater good, not just the law. Now, when you hit 30, you'll understand that. Or maybe not in your case. What's the matter? I just got an email from the orthopaedic surgeon who's treated Connor Wallace. He says that the boy's running career is as good as over after the beating he took from Tom Dwyer. That's bad news, mate. It is for Dwyer. Find it for resting him and make it a few broken bones of his own. Right, are we all ready? What for, Gov? The new super arrives today, so let's get off to a good start, eh? Someone's wife. Tony, the FME's in today. Why don't we get him to look at that ankle? <laughs> That'd be daft. I'll walk it off in five minutes. Right, I'm going to greet the new superintendent, so I'll see you later. Ah, do you know? It's no governor. What have you heard about him? Um, firm but fair, mostly. Apparently, he takes a very tough stance on ankle injuries. Uh, you, um, haven't heard that he wants to bring in younger officers. You know, he could get in two new probations on what he's paying me. Tony, how many governors have you and I seen come and go? Three, four. 
Exactly. They come, they go. They blast in on a wave of hot air, saying they're going to change this, that and the other, and then six months later we're back to normal. If Superintendent Heaton has got any sense, trust me, he will value old-timers like us for the wisdom that only comes after years in the job. Yeah, yeah thanks, June. The old angle's feeling a bit raw, isn't it? Shut up. Shut up and sit down. This lady and gentleman are in front of you. He's going to be here in a minute. Yes, I know. And you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Have you called maintenance? Yes. Do you know what, sorry, I'm going to get him off myself. Don't stop. Come on, don't stop. 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 Which one of you wants to be locked up? If Beth didn't give a consent, then it was rape full stop. Kezia, she was so out of it, she wasn't even certain it was rape. Any half-decent defence brief would tear her to shreds. As the law stands, a victim can be unconscious and it's still rape. I don't see the problem. All we need is some supporting evidence, like that bloke she was with in the club. Look, let's just see, OK? Don't get your hopes up. Hey, this looks like him. Oh, shut up. Any more out of you you're going to spend the night in the cells. <clears throat> This is definitely him. Well, it's all right. We're spotless. Morning. Morning, sir. Superintendent Heaton, welcome to Sunhill. I'm Sergeant Smith and I'll be giving you a guided tour. No need for that. I'll find my own way around. You might want to move that mop. On second thoughts, maybe not. You could be needing it. <laughs> Superintendent's office is this way, isn't it? Oh, yes. Sorry, sir. Yes. Right, let me show you the one. No, no, I'll be fine. Um, well, it's the first door on the left. What was that about first impressions? I've taken the liberty of booking you a meeting with our partner organisations this afternoon. Actually, sir, I'd really like to get to grips with this place before linking up with anyone else. I'm sure you understand. Of course. Did you meet our sergeants? They were meant to give you the grand tour. No, I won't be needing that. And I've already heard very positive things about your uniformed officers. I'd like to get to grips with CID, if I may. There's something I want to discuss with them. Good morning, everyone. If I can have your attention. I'd like to introduce you to Superintendent John Heaton. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And this is DCI Jack Meadows. How do you do, sir? Ah, yes. Right. Down to business, if I may. Has everyone seen this? Have we any idea who's responsible for attacking this lad? A young dealer by the name of Tom Dwyer, sir. Good. And that's positive news that we have a name. OK. What do headlines like this tell people? Uh, violence is on the increase. Wrong. That's just the surface. What they tell people is that we're losing the war against drugs. So what do we do about it? Here's what I think. Who's the biggest gang in this borough? Let me give you a clue. It's us. And it's about time we started throwing our weight around. Tomorrow's headline will be more positive. That's your target, ladies and gentlemen. I want Tom Dwyer by the end of today. And I don't care what you have to do to get him. If you have any questions, you know where I am. Jack? Can we have a quick chat? All right. And if we don't land Dwyer, what does that make us look like? What are you worried about, Stuart? He's just setting us a little test to see what we're made of. You up to it? Of course I am, Philip. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. I didn't really have time to fill you in on what I was after. That's all right, sir. I like to hit the ground running. Normally we'll have time to talk things through. I'm looking forward to working with you. Same here. They seem a decent bunch in there. Yeah, they're a strong team, and I'm sure we can pull this one off. Good. I'm counting on it. Right, well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get on. Welcome to Sunhill, sir. Thank you. Word to the wise. You've got an excellent group of officers out there. 
Sometimes best to let them follow their own instincts and come up with their own ideas. I understand, sir. I try not to be too hands-on. But most people benefit from a gentle push. Of course. It's entirely up to you. I'm not telling you what to do. It's just a matter of finding the right balance. Absolutely. Excellent. I'll leave you to it. Mr. Flynn, she said she left here around 2.30. But from what she said about the state she was in by then, she might have been wrong. Uh -huh. No, here she is. Stop. Would you mind winding it back for a sec, please? There she is. She's more wobbly on her legs than he is. Do you know who this man is? I'll just get out of the way, shall I? No, no, you love. It's all right, excuse me. She said his name began with G. Gary, something like that? Nah. I think that's a bloke called Greg. So how do we find his surname? Does anybody else in the club know him? You might be in luck. He's a regular in it, so he could be a member. OK. We've got Greg Evans and Greg Nye. Where do they live? Um, she said that they walked to the place. You want Greg Nye, then? He's five minutes away. There's just so many of them, isn't there? I'm not trying to do that. Have you questioned any of these people yet? Uh, I've talked to some of them, sir, but they're not exactly the helpful type. I wouldn't expect them to be helpful, DC Nadir. This is pond life we're talking about. They'll need encouragement before they help us. So let's give them some. Dear Hunter, I want you to organise search warrants for all the addresses you've got. Well, all of them, sir? Yes. I don't care how many there are, one of them will have the information we need. Sort out uniform backup with Sergeant Smith. We're going to turn them over today. Yes, sir. You didn't think I was serious, did you? Well, I am. And you'd better be too. Greg Nye. That's right. Okay. My name's DC yeah. Sim, and I'm with DC Kezia Walker. Can we come in? Really? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for that. Mr. Nye's got previous for dealing ecstasy six months ago. What state must Beth have been in? She started to have sex with him. She didn't even know his name. That's the ketamine. If they snorted enough to black out, Beth could have even hit the K hole. Meaning? If they got it really bad, you hallucinate, you see all sorts of weird stuff. Not the kind of thing you want a defence brief to know about. So what's this about? Have you got a warrant? No, but we'd like to ask you some questions about an incident that happened early Sunday morning. Is it that girl, Beth? Well, it involves her, yes. What would you like to tell us about her, Mr Nye? Nothing. There's nothing to tell. You look worried, Mr Nye. Yeah, I'm worried about what she might have said. And what might she have said? <laughs> Listen, I know what women are like. <laughs> Listen, she agreed to have sex in the club. Did she? Oh, come on, she's hardly fighting me off. Oh, she's saying that I raped her. If she is, then that's crazy. Well, Mr Nye, I would like you to come back to the station with us to make a formal statement, please. Now. <laughs> OK, fine. I've done nothing wrong. We'll see about that, shall we? You all right, Tom? Hello, Sarge. It's a bit of handed if you ask me. After what Dwyer did to that bloke, you've got to be kidding. Marcus Dwyer. That's right. I'm Sergeant Smith from Sunhill. I've got a warrant to search your premises. Tony, what's this? Sorry, Mr. Dwyer. Well, you'd better come in. I've got nothing to hide. If it's my weed you're after. It's in the box on the mantelpiece. Thank you. Sorry. Why? DS Tenants is DS Nixon, Sunhill CID. We've got a warrant to search these premises. Mr. Why, it's going to go a lot better for all of us if you just cooperate. Now, this warrant entitles us to use whatever means necessary to gain access. Including kicking your doors in. Guys? Thank you. 
You better not damage anything. I've got rights. Yeah, not as many as we have, darling. Right, in you come, lads. OK, you two check out the kitchen. You take the dog in there. You are very fond of microwaves, Tisha. Use a different one every day of the month. Oh! Come on, it's just a few stick insects, isn't it? Perfect place to hide something. Mm, especially as there's a scorpion in there. Oi. So, Letitia, where's Tom? You want him? You find him. Don't worry, we will. Search! What are you doing? Go for it. We're getting warm, Tish. Oi, that's brand new. You said you weren't going to cause no damage. Now, you see, this is what we call a metropolitan makeover. And what do you call that? Scorpion food. We understand both of you were thrown out of the club. Yeah, we were caught by one of the bouncers. And then? We walked back to my place. What happened there? Nothing. Listen, by the time I got home, I could barely walk. Right, I never touched her. Is that what she's saying? We're investigating a rape. Oh, no way. Now, we've been snorting ketamine. We were both out of it. And that's why I don't remember much about what happened, but I know I didn't rape her. Did you have sex with her after you left the club? No, that's what I'm telling you. We've seen video of you both leaving the club. She looks more out of it than you do. So? Ketamine's been used as a date rape drug before now. Then why would you listen to what I'm saying? We met to my place and we crashed out. Well, she said she woke up at home, Greg. Did you drive her there? Well? Wait a minute. Uh... Yeah, that's it. She called a minicab. Are you sure? Yeah, it's, it's coming back to me. I remember being at home with the phone book open and looking. When we met to my place, she used her mobile to call a cab to take her home. You're certain of this? She called a minicab? Yeah, I'm positive. Now, I, I don't know which company, but I'm certain that's what she did. Now, do, does that help? Yes, Mr Nye. That helps a lot. <laughs> did you get anything off Maya's cousin? No. no. Oh, that's a shame. Well, we just got half a key of brown off this delightful mum here. Just about to question her now, aren't we, Letitia? Well done. I think they're trying to rub it in. Just childish. Anybody would think we weren't on the same team. Phil, Zane, I've got Tom Dwyer's granddad in the cell. Do you fancy having a chat with him? Yeah, do you remember the minicab? Emmanuel West seems to think you did. Have you checked the call list? I can do. Um... Let me see, sorry. Dialed numbers. Yeah, I um there's three calls quite close together just after three in the morning. Can I look at Cheers. So um do you think it could be the driver? The other rate we're investigating involves a minicab driver. This could be the answer to both. But it's too early to be certain, Beth. Sorry, I've got to go. Hang on. We'll let you know what we find out. We've got him. She ended up back at home. This explains it. Kezia, don't make her any promises. But we could still have a serial rapist out there. We've got to stop him, Susie. You are allowed a solicitor, Mr. Dwyer. I know. I don't want a solicitor. You ask me questions, I'll answer them. I'm not trying to fool you any more than you're trying to fool me. So just for the record, can you confirm that you've waived your right for legal advice? Yeah, sure. First time I was busted, I did it all myself. The whole case. Yeah, so you lost. I was guilty as charged. At least the law's changed a bit since then. No, it's not changed that much. Yeah, look, this is fascinating. Can I ask you a straight question? Do you know the whereabouts of your grandson, Mr. Dwyer? No, I don't. I've lost touch with him. Why's that? He's chosen his own direction in life. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. He's selling heroin to school kids and he's breaking people's legs. Now, I'd say that's an interesting direction for a young man's life to take. Isn't it? Why are you talking about my grandson like that? Because your grandson is a violent criminal. Now face the facts, where is he? You know, I may be a grandfather who smoked too much weed in his time, but my brain's still working. You've arrested me for possession of cannabis. You can ask me all the questions you want about that, but I'm not going to talk to you about my grandson. Do I make myself clear? Not my drugs. And I ain't saying nothing else. Could there be something to do with your son? I said I ain't saying, you deaf bitch. You're priceless, Tish. 
You really are. Letitia, look, I can understand why you want to protect Tom. I can. But we already know that he's selling heroin, so you're not giving anything away by admitting the stuff we found today is his. I told you. I ain't saying. And that's it. Look, if we can't find Tom to question him about this, the likelihood is you'll go down for it. So? Well, you're already starting to shake, Tish. Very hard for you to survive inside without your daily fix, now, wouldn't it? I'm a junkie. But I ain't stupid. You're not allowed to do this. I ain't saying nothing. I think they both know exactly where he is. This is just misguided loyalty. The question is, which one of them will see sense? Well, sir, we think that the, the mother's the weak link. Mm. So what's taking you so long? Well, she's been in before, sir, and um, her technique is very good. I'd expect yours to be better, D.S. Nixon. I think the grandfather's the key, sir. Someone on the team knows him, he's a family man. He raised Letitia on his own and he seems pretty ashamed of the way she's turned out. Does he? OK. We'll play on parental guilt, then. Leave him to me. Sir? I thought this was about me. I told those other guys I'm not answering questions about my grandson. OK. Interview suspended at... 14.16. Let's try and forget I'm a police officer for a moment. I'm talking to you as a parent now, Marcus. Do you ever think you went wrong with Letitia? What kind of question is that? Well, let me put it more bluntly. Your daughter's sitting in a cell facing charges of possessing half a kilo of a Class A drug. She's what? Still in her 30s. 36. March the 29th. I expect you remember to send her a card every year. For all the good it does. You're clearly a good and caring man. So what happened? She fell in with the wrong people. My wife, Jean, died when Letitia was 12 years old. It hit us both very bad. I raised her on my own. I tried my best, and I'm still trying. It might be too late to help Letitia, but it's not too late for Tom. You don't want the same thing to happen to your grandson, do you? No. But he's not a bad kid, you know. He's just a bit wild, like I used to be. <laughs> He'll calm down. Not the way things are heading. Do you know why I'm showing you this, Marcus? Tom wouldn't do this. Marcus, wake up and face it. Your grandson's selling heroin to school kids. Some of them are only 12. The same age Letitia was when your wife died. This lad's little sister overdosed. Tom is not an innocent could end up killing somebody, and you know it. Marcus, your grandson's buying the drugs he sells from a supplier who may have some kind of a hold over him. That's one of the reasons we'd like to talk to him. This is hard for me. He's in trouble with you. We'll just lock him up. I can't send my own grandson to prison. All right. Let's look at this another way. Let's look to the future. Do you think Tom's situation is going to get any better? Most of the gun crime in this borough is down to drugs. How long will it be before your grandson's just another grim statistic? We want to stop Tom before it's too late. And I'm sure you do too. I'm going to leave you to think this over. How can you ask me to do this? Because I'm a parent, like you. Dwyer's at 231 Harmore Road. It's an old warehouse. Right, sir. Oh, I see what's happening. So, uh, what did you say to him, sir? Not a lot. A bit like management. All about pressing the right buttons. Sir. OK, thanks for that. Kezia, Greg Knight doesn't have a driving licence, so if Beth was in a car, it wasn't his. Can you drive with Smithy? Robocop. Yeah. We can Tony and Dan for exactly two hours. I think he started his stopwatch. Smithy's all right? Yeah, if you like your men buttoned up. Yep, I'm still here. Thanks, we'll be in later. Cheers. Sergeant Smith said you need us? Yeah, Tony, we're investigating an allegation of rape. We think it might be a minicab driver, but we've got three companies to check out. What kind of companies? Oh, it's more than likely this girl's just picked up with someone who's calling himself a cabbie. Well, we'll have to see. Was the victim drunk? She was on ketamine, why? Why? Don't go there, don't even begin to think it. Think what? 
that she had it coming to her because she was off her head. I wasn't. But what I do think is why make yourself more vulnerable? I mean, put yourself at risk. If you're not able to fight someone off, then... So tell me why should a woman have to fight a bloke off then? I'm going to him right today. Right. If you and Dan can check out Cityscape Car Services. Actually, that's a bit tricky. I do a bit of caddying there myself. No, no, it's, uh, it's legit and everything. It's, uh, since my dad went into a care home, I need the extra cash. It's uh, not something I'll never want to know about. I'm not sure I want the other drivers to know I'm a copper either, if you know what I mean. That's, that's fine. Um, Susie and I will do it. You take speed, call your secret safe with me. Thanks. Oh, and Tony, I didn't mean to snap at you earlier. It's just that uh, I really want to nick this bloke, yeah? Sweet, we beat him to it. We won't wait for the others. He could leg it. Come on. You might make it. Or you might break your legs. I've got the gear. What's the problem? Maybe you need a little push. Just the three of us. You could have a little accident. Oh, you touch me, you're a dead man! Look at you. Just a scared little boy. Believe me, Tommy, you ain't seen nothing yet. Ooh. Go on, do it. Jump. Do it! No, you don't. Kill me! Oh, too easy! You're not going to spoil my fun. I'm arresting you for GBH. You could sign there and there, please. You've been given a police caution. This will remain on record. OK, Mr Dwyer, you're free to go. Well, it's a shame you missed all the fun. Yeah, it's a team effort, Phil. Yeah, just a shame your team never showed up, innit? Well, you grass me up! It's for your own good. You need to think about where your life is heading, boy. Well, you're dead, yeah. I can fix that. Oh, come here. Get Mr. Dwyer's in the front office, please. Tom Dwyer, GBH. Well, well. From what I hear, Mr. Heaton's going to be very pleased with you, too. Thanks. There he is. Come on. All right, come on. DC Sims and LCID, there's DC Walker. Mind if we have a word? Is this about that red light I skipped on Friday? No, we need to ask you a few questions about a fare you picked up early Sunday morning. What's this about? Well, there's a call logged at eight minutes past three on Sunday morning. You went to a pick-up on 64 Sign Court. A woman in her 20s? Don't remember. It's logged. You went to the pick-up. It's on the record. Sign Court? Oh, yeah, that new build. Yeah, I know it. It was a no-show. What? I waited five minutes, rang the bell, there was no-one there. You get a lot of that the weekend. So what happened? I got another job two streets down. Can you prove that? Of course, because that'll be logged too. What's this about? Am I supposed to have done something? We'll let you know. Um, do you have a contact number for us? I've got a job for you. Yeah, I, I, I've got to go. Um, Sandra in the office, she's got it. Thanks. We'll double-check this. If it pans out, he's not a man. So what do we tell Beth? Do you know this, lad? For the record, I'm showing Mr Dwyer a photograph of Connor Wallace. Never seen him before. 
Maybe you don't recognise him because his face is all bruised and swollen. Have a closer look. Nothing to do with me, pal. I ain't your pal. But if I was, I would advise you to start taking this very seriously. You attacked Connor Wallace. That's crap. You got someone to hold him down, and then you kicked his legs until they broke. You knew that running was this boy's life, and you wanted to make sure that he never ran again, isn't that right? I ain't even listening to this. You better listen and listen hard. You think that Connor doesn't remember the face of the coward that did this to him? He says it's me, and he's lying. OK, Tom, can I just make something perfectly clear to you right now, OK? You're not going home. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I don't care what legal advice you've been given, you are going to go down for this. It's just a matter of how long. Am I getting through to you, pal? Dwyer wants to do a deal, sir. He's offering us his main supply, which is big time and that he's worth a lot. There are his words. He's got some crazy idea that we're going to let him off. Even though his brief put him straight. He told Dwyer that all we could do is send a letter to his trial judge. That's it. So what you're saying is he'll give us the name if he thinks he's getting a nominal sentence and nothing more? That's right, sir. Does he really believe that we can fix that? I don't think he's going to believe it coming from us. But if he comes straight from the top, sir... Mr. Dwyer. Hello. I'm Superintendent John Heaton. Pleased to meet you. Got everything you want. Would you like a cup of tea? No. What are you doing in there, man? You're brass. Yes, I am. I wanted to chat with you. Just the two of us. I understand you might have some information. I want my lawyer in there. Oh, I don't think we need to bother with solicitors. Do we? So, what have you got? Who do you buy your drugs from? I should just remind you, you're facing a very serious assault charge. I'd say ten years inside. I just want the name, Tom. Nathan has. I've got proof. I've got records. What kind of records? Times and dates of deals I've done. And I've got a mate to shoot me buying off him on my phone. Serious footage. Clear. Why would you do that? Insurance. Paying off now, isn't it? If this is genuine. Where are these records? Well, that's my business. I think you'll find it isn't. My mum's. Bottom of the scorpion tank. Smart hiding place. And we've got your phone in custody, haven't we? Good lad. Well, that's worth something. Look, I ain't going down. Whatever I've done to that kid, he had it coming to him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I do indeed. Thank you very much for your cooperation, Mr. Dwyer. Very much appreciated. What's this, man? Oh, I've got a deal! Not with me, you haven't. Kezia, I got an email from the refuge. They've confirmed that sexual intercourse took place, but they couldn't find any DNA. Not Greg's, not the rapists. They couldn't find any evidence of violence taking place. But that's because of the ketamine. It deadens the link between your brain and your nervous system. Beth couldn't even struggle. If we want to explain the lack of struggling, we have to mention the drug. We were hoping not to do that because of its hallucinogenic quality and because of her job. She was still raped, whatever she took. Of course she was. But I still think we need to call her in and talk this through. Without the DNA, we're at a dead end. Come on. Right, Nathan Ayers, possession of a Class A drug with intent to supply. He thinks he's been set up. Don't they all? You think I don't know how you got my name? Kristen Shaw. I'm right, aren't I? Why would she set you up? Work it out for yourselves. We're in the same line of business. Drugs. Well, I've never heard of her. Thanks for that one. Add that one to the list. It doesn't really matter who shot you, though, does it, Mr. Ayres? But what does matter is this. Blimey. There's four more of them in the car. Now, you're not going to tell me this is for personal use, are you, Mr. Ayres? <laughs> hmm. 
We haven't been able to trace the driver yet. It wasn't the guy you called to pick you up, so it looks like it could be someone claiming to be a minicab driver just cruising the streets. Which makes him impossible to find. No, we could still find him. It's just going to take a bit longer. There are no guarantees, however. Beth, please have a seat. <clears throat> we managed to find some CCTV footage of you after you left Mr. Nye's flat. We're hoping it might help you remember if you watch it. OK. The picture's not all that clear, but we identified you from the clothes you were wearing. Look at the state of me. God, I'm never going to let this happen again. I'm sorry, can we stop? Please, I just can't go through this. I feel so ashamed of myself. Don't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Yeah, and I've said exactly the same speech, you know, when girls have come into St Hugh's. You know, I expect that we've even got the same victim counselling numbers to give out. Beth, we're not giving up on this, and I don't want you to either. Sergeant. Kristen Shaw, there doesn't seem to be any obvious connection to the drugs business, whatever A says. I found this website for a that she runs, Bar Morocco. What have you got? Garvez is claiming that he's in a turf war with a rival drugs gang who was supplied by some pretty heavyweight foreigners. The only name he knows is Kristen Shaw. Keep looking. <clears throat> so, we get the big catch in Dwyer and Ayers, and you get the small fry. No, mate, I think we both know who the big catch is. Well done, everyone. You passed today's little test. But don't worry, you'll be getting plenty more. Well, you got our full support, sir, and we're ready for any test you set us. Good. You can get your head out of my backside now, dear Stanner. And I mean to carry on where I've started. Hard line, especially on drugs. No more liberal policing in Sun Hill. Jack, can we have a chat in a minute or so? Certain. No liberal policing? What's that, a digger Adam O'Carra? Yeah, I don't know what you're smiling at, mate. I don't trust him. Oh, but he's got your full support. Yeah, there's a difference. And this hard line on drugs, that just sounds like old-fashioned zero tolerance to me. That's not going to work, is it? Not long term. Well, it's about grabbing headlines. You no know, pushing all the right buttons. Oh, uh, well, if that's all that matters, you're welcome to it, Phil. Someone caught up with me. My daughter, one of my grandson's so called friends. Who knows? Still think you did the right thing turning Tom in. Doesn't this prove it? Well, I suppose so. It is not the kind of proof I was looking for. It's a strange world, Tony. Tell me about it. Look, I'll get you that cup of tea you wanted. Thank you, my friend. So long as you don't light up, we'll be fine. We're going to start policing to the letter of the law now, Jack. No excuses, no exceptions. First target is dealers selling to school kids. But we're going to be doing a lot more than that. Next stop is the middle market, the suppliers. I need everyone with me. Of course, sir. I'd like to know who my friends are. And my enemies, of course. Very wise. So do I. Good night, sir. Next time on The Bill. Maybe you could do it for me. But that's got to be worth something. We are talking to you. Next tonight, from the terrors of the tsunami to a horrifying motorbike accident, true life tales of wedding days that went disastrously wrong, hopefully with some fairy tale endings. A new series from hell. Then a pig, a plan and a porky. Shadrach's in big trouble in Emmerdale at 10. <laughs>